Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Come to you again with questions from the magic box. Questions posed by your fellow viewers. It could be you. Let's see what's in there this week. Oh my. Oh my. Well, it seems several questions sort of merged into one. The questions are, do we live in one universe? Or is there truth to the multiverse theory that there are multiple versions of the current timeline that we are living in now? Our physical universe seems infinite, at least in the case of the laws of physics. But with the laws of physics come many other restrictions. But to convey the infinity of the astral and mental planes, the physical universe should also be infinite. So do we as humans cannot yet comprehend it enough, cannot see as far into the universe to see this infinity? Or rather, the universe is, at least in some aspects, finite? I was just thinking about your comments on being able to see an accurate perception of the future from the greater self perspective. And I would really appreciate a video clarifying this topic. Like how are we free to do anything, yet from the greater self perspective, everything has already happened? And then if the universe is infinite, then doesn't that mean that there are many different versions of reality that exist where I make different decisions in this moment? So, this started out as a one question that I spent a lot of time thinking about and preparing to talk about, and it was about whether or not the multiverse theory is accurate. Multiverse theory being primarily and most usually uh, a question of whether or not um, every choice that we make spawns another branch in the timeline where that choice is made differently. So there are multiple universes coexisting, all being generated by choice. and by the options that are presented. So every possible nuance of things that could happen is manifest in its own universe. Um, then the next question was questioning whether or not the universe is actually infinite. And if not, why not, uh, etc. Mostly referring to the physical universe. The third question, which suddenly tied all of this together for me, was a question about the perspective I've spoken of on time, being different from our perspective here, uh, in which we are in this uh, progressive thing we call time, or the perspective of the greater self and the supernal realm in general, where all of time is complete as a single whole thing occurring in an infinitely large now moment, okay? So, how do those mix? How can, from the perspective of the greater self, our whole lifetime uh, is visible from beginning to end um, yet from this perspective, it's all about a freedom of choice, a freedom of will, um, and it's totally unpredictable. Okay. So, <clears throat> well, that's a whole lot of stuff. So, it will take a moment to answer all of that. First, I will begin with whether or not the universe is infinite. 
my experience, and you know, there are scientific theories about it being infinite and it being finite, about the Big Bang, etc. Okay? These are just theories, they're always in flux. A lot of recent information seems to be pointing out that the Big Bang is just that, a theory, and did not actually occur, and that the universe could be trillions upon trillions of years older. Uh, so, science doesn't know. That's what science is telling us. We have theories about what the universe is, but we don't know, okay? So, <clears throat> what I have to say is based upon my experience. Whether that's any more valid than any theories out there, I have no way of knowing, okay? This is simply my experience. And to me, the universe how to put it, uh, sings the song of infinity at every level, at every moment of the cosmos, the physical universe as well. The mental universe, I mean, to us it seems more obvious that this is infinite, because just with our minds alone, which are tiny little bits of this mental universe, we can think of an infinite number given the time of ideas, okay? So to us it's easy to think of the mental universe being infinite. And we know so little in general about the astral level of the universe that it's easy for us to think of it as infinite. Mostly we wish it to be infinite. We don't know if it's infinite. Physical universe is where the question really arises. Can space be infinite? You know? And my experience is that yes. Space, space time is infinite. I see that just from looking at the physical universe, when everything within our physical experience is not only infinite externally, but infinite internally, we can look inside smaller and smaller and smaller when we crash these small little particles into each other, poof, even smaller particles appear. So as our scientific apparatus progresses, we see ever smaller. So, it's, the universe is infinitely finite, but it is also infinitely infinite when we look through our telescopes and various other instruments, we don't yet find the end point. Comes a point we can't see beyond, but as each time that our instruments, you know, advance, we see further and there's still shit out there. So yes, my experience of the universe, when I mental travel in the universe, there is no end. But, and now we come to the multiverse theory. I, my experience is that no, the multiverse theory is not valid. It's not necessary to result in infinity to posit the multiverse theory where 
each moment, each possible uh, choice presents, you know, a different timeline. This, this just doesn't fit with my experience. With the truly infinite universe, it's not necessary. Okay, there is enough variety, there is an infinite amount of variety in the universe without this idea of the splitting of the timelines. Because, okay, where I see this is at the level of the greater self, okay? Each greater self projects its body, essentially, its greater self stuff into the temporal sequential universe. This projection of itself results in the temporal sequential universe. It is temporal sequential stuff that is given birth to by the greater selves. And the shape that that stuff takes is in individual selves individualized bits of the one self, the I. So every one of these individualized selves projected by the greater selves is an individual self, a small reflection of that I. Okay? There is only one copy of each of these individual selves. Each one of these individual selves is utterly unique. An example of an individual self is me, is you. Is this cup, is the magic box, Everything that exists is an individual self. An individual self that here is incarnate, is in a body, in a flesh and blood. That's what incarnate means. I'm here in my carne, my beef, okay? I am incarnate an individual self that is incarnate. The individual self is primarily a mental thing. Okay? But it takes on an astral and physical form. So here, it is a physio astromental thing. My individual self, who I am, <clears throat> is a physio astra-mental thing, okay? There's only one of me. I don't split off into different timelines. None of us do. We are utter, utterly unique, which means that we make uh, utterly unique choices. Okay? See, this is the thing. Um, <clears throat> the multiverse theory, number one, misinterprets the nature of infinity and <clears throat> it misinterprets our power of choice. Now, I'm not talking about free will. To me, this free will is sort of nothing. I mean, hell, we can will anything, but that has absolutely no impact on the universe. Not willing it doesn't have any impact. It's our actions that have impact, okay? And our choices that have impact. Every choice that every 
thing, every individual self composing the universe, every choice that we make alters the universe, okay? The universe, since it's all so closely integrated, when I move my hand, I'm affecting everything around me. The air is moving, energy is moving, right? So every choice we make has the same effect on the universe. The universe adapts to the choice we've made. Plain and simple. That occurs for everything that exists. We are all continuously impacting the universe around us. We are what makes up the universe around us, and we are a dynamic, living thing. This cosmos, which we are a part of. It's all integrated. It's a one thing, okay? So all of our choices change the universe as a whole. We don't split off into different timelines. Those choices that are available to us do not exist as separate timelines. The, the, timeline is constantly changing and constantly being changed by all of our choices, okay? That is the universe that we live in, the sequential temporal universe that we live in. Now, <clears throat> the universe, the supernal realm, the, <clears throat> okay, let me say first, let's talk about the mental body, since the individual self is essentially mental. This is our mental body, it is our awareness. So it exists at all levels of our incarnation. We have the earth region, which is the region I'm using here to talk to you, right? This is the part of my awareness that perceives and interacts with the material universe, okay? Then there's the water region of my mental body. This is what we call the astral body. This is that medium that enables the unification of the mental with the physical so that the mental body can reside in the physical body. This is the astral medium that we commonly think of as emotion. This is what binds awareness to physicality for human beings is emotion. At its more universal level, that's significance, the impact that everything has upon everything else. This is our way of sensing that impact that things have upon us and we have upon other things in the physical realm. Okay, so this is the medium that unites the awareness to the physical body. Now, we come to the awareness itself. Without body, physical, or astral body, we have the, first we have the air region of the mental body. Now, this is our thinking, communicating awareness. I'm using my air region of my mental body, and you are as well, as you listen to my words and comprehend what I'm saying. Fairly simple, right? Now, there is yet another part of the temporal mental body. This is the individual self's mental body. The individual self is totally a creature of the temporal realm, sequential temporal realm, okay? So of the temporal mental body, we have the earth, air, water, 
and air and fire region. Now this is the most ephemeral of them all. It's like that little flame that shoots up into the air and dances around, okay? This is the aspect of awareness that connects with the eye and with the greater self who is part of the supernal realm. Now, the greater self is the first layer of our supernal mental body, okay? The supernal mental body encompasses millions of individual selves, of temporal mental bodies, okay? So, <clears throat> With the temporal mental body, the earth, air, and fiery earth, the earth, water, and air regions specifically, all that we are capable of experiencing is a sequential temporal reality. Because our psyche, our the mental substance of our awareness is made out of, you know, the sequential temporal reality. We are the sequential temporal reality. But the fire region, with that fire region, we can consciously and intentionally connect with the supernal region. That is the magic of the fire region of the temporal mental body. It has, it alone has this power to connect with the supernal realm, specifically with the greater self. Okay, when we do that, when we connect with the greater self, and then when we merge with the greater self, we can perceive time and space as an enclosed infinity. It is infinite within itself. But from the perspective of a supernal realm, it is a fait accompli. Okay? The whole of time space exists simultaneously in an infinite now moment, okay? From that perspective, it is possible to look down at an entire individual self um, <clears throat> existence of thousands of incarnations. The individual self is what incarnates and disincarnates, incarnates and disincarnates, incarnates and disincarnates, over and over and over as the I self realizes, as part of that self-realization process, okay? So it is possible to see the whole of a specific incarnation of an individual self. The easiest thing to perceive is the own individual self and the current incarnation. In other words, that aspect of the individual self that rose up to make contact with the greater self, okay? That is where consciousness is anchored at this moment in time-space within that enclosed infinity, okay? So that is how we perceive the whole thing, but within that infinity, it's totally different. 
nothing is predicted, nothing is predestined for certain from within the temporal sequential realm, okay? It's all open to chance. It's all open to the choices that each one of the infinite number of individual selves that make up the infinite cosmos makes at any given moment in time. So it's infinitely complex. I mean, this will... Thinking too deeply on this <laughs> requires conscience, requires caution because it can make you insane. There have been people who've returned from these contemplations totally scrambled because it's just so complex. Infinity is ultimately incomprehensible, I suppose, but it's experienceable. See, that's the thing. It's impossible to comprehend something that's infinite because comprehension requires a sequence of incremental steps and in an infinity there is an infinity of incremental steps. It takes forever, but it is always possible to become the whole infinity. And that is essentially what we do when we rise up and merge with the greater self and then further merge with the I. We become all of the all of these infinities. And from that aspect, comprehension changes even further. So, <clears throat> from the perspective of the greater self, it is possible to perceive one's entire incarnation from beginning to end, as well as all of one's incarnations, past and future. Um, it is possible. The likelihood of you ever doing that is infinitesimal, okay? Um, it's not something to be driven for. It really isn't. It really doesn't... Well, well, let me backtrack for a minute. The only way to make that perception in such a way that you have any conscious awareness of it, that you can bring back any sort of memory of it, is if you have the skill in your mental wandering to very oh boy uh, to moderate and define very specifically and accurately the level of connection between the fire and air regions of your mental body. You have to leave enough of a connection between the two throughout the experience in order to be able to retain any sort of intellectual connection with what you have just perceived of the non-sequential realm, of the eternal realm. Okay. Um, only when you have perfected that ability do you have any hope of, you know, having that experience ultimately mean anything. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's no easy feat 
to accomplish. Um, and what most people do when they see into the future, what they're seeing are the threads of continuity that run through the whole sequential universe and connect each thing to the next thing, each event to the next event, each moment to the next moment. And those threads of continuity are very strong, yet they're very brittle at the same time and can be, you know, very easily uh, destroyed. For example, you bomb a building, you disrupt and destroy the threads of continuity that started when that building was first built and maintained that building throughout its existence. So it's easy to do. You know, I can rip up a piece of paper and I destroy the threads of continuity that held it in place. Um, so, the threads of continuity can tell the likely, the most likely uh, future, but they cannot never tell the exact future. That is only known when we experience it, because it doesn't exist until it's experienced, okay? Within this infinite bubble of time-space perceived by the greater self, okay? So they both, these things, exist simultaneously. You just have to get used to it. It's just the way it is. Um, yeah, just the way it is. So, there, there is fate but only to a certain extent. It's like our natal astrological chart. This is what we're born with. What we make of it is up to us. It's a statement of a moment in time. And that's what fate is. Fate is just like the natal chart. It's the initial imprint of our incarnation. What things, what's, what's at the root of that is essential meaning, okay? So that essential meaning must be enacted during our incarnation in ordinarily that enactment occurs in these specific ways because of the culture, you know, the time of the universe and the type of per person uh, the individual is, okay? But every choice we make impacts how that essential meaning is going to be enacted. And it's up to us how we enact that essential meaning. That's our freedom of choice, not our freedom of will, because willing doesn't matter here. It's only choice that matters. What choice we make in any given moment. And especially the big choices. Those are what greatly influence how our fate is manifest, okay? Okay, so I, I think I have answered all of those questions together in, in one ball of yarn. Uh, yes, the universe is infinite. 
no, the multiverse theory is, is crap. And yeah, talked about the different perspectives. Okay, so that has pared down the magic box of questions a bit. And it'll be need to be filled up some more. So definitely if you have any questions you want to have addressed, just put them in the comments below and we'll add them to the list. Add them to the little pieces of paper in the magic box. Okay, till then, bye bye.